Welcome to the Portland Pentecostals podcast. We're happy you've decided to join us as we build a life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ. Enjoy the message. So we're going to start a new series that we're, we're going to start it tonight. And then we're going to pick up on it after uh, Brother Cornejo is with us the next two Sunday or next two weekends. And so we're uh, looking forward to that revival. But um, this is really, um, I'm going to tie it in in just a moment a little bit clearer. But this is really meant to be a segue from the, the, the series that I taught last, um, which was on who am I, on our identity and who God made us to be. Because um, as if you maybe remember, I, I used the saying that, that we, we always do who we are. That who you are will always come out in the what you do, in how you do what you do. So your what might change as far as what it looks like, the techniques, the, the approach, the, the even position that you, that you uh, have in your family because your family grows and, and your kids leave the house. Uh, uh, you might do different uh, 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 roles as far as ministering to your fellow believers. Uh, um, you may l- uh, move to a different city. All those things change. But if the who of who God made us to be is, is properly in place and perspective, then no matter what uh, season you are in life, you will be able to do what God intended for you to do that is unchanging. And, uh, and so we're going to tie that in as we go through our lesson tonight. Uh, but so tonight we're going to talk, we're going to begin the series on being sent. So uh, the sermon that I preached a few weeks back on being apostolic is to be sent, that the church was meant to be sent out, that we weren't meant to uh, have a mentality of coming and just uh, uh, sitting uh, in, at the feet of Jesus and, and consuming without having a, a purpose of going and sharing the gospel. And so we're going to flesh that out in the next few weeks. And so tonight is going to be uh, um, uh, a very, uh, uh, it's going to be about embracing the mission. That's what we're talking about tonight, is embracing the mission. So what is the mission of the church of the living God? What is the mission? Well, let's start with the the clarity of what was Jesus' mission. In Luke chapter number 19, verses 8 through 10, we read the, the scripture about the interaction that Jesus had with Zacchaeus. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So the design of the intention of Jesus Christ, the mission of Jesus Christ was to seek and save that which was lost. That was the very purpose that Jesus came into the earth for. And and as we're going to go through these lessons, we're going to unpack what that looks like more specifically as we go through this because our role in in the mission of Jesus is so important important, but just like Jesus' mission, if you were to boil it down, it was to seek and save that which was lost. But uh, he, there was a lot to that. Uh, the, everything he did was for that intention. Uh, so when he healed the sick, He was really seeking and saving that which was lost because health was lost when sin came into the world. 
when Jesus uh, forgave sins, he was seeking and saving the lost. And then, of course, we know that the ultimate uh, the, uh, fleshing out of our salvation came through the cross uh, and through the resurrection on the third day. But all of that could be summed up to say Jesus' purpose, which was God's purpose, was to seek and save that which was lost. That was the purpose of God from the point that Adam and Eve sinned. It was the purpose of God that he was going to seek and save the lost. Everything in the Old Testament was the pathway to Jesus Christ so that Jesus Christ could pay the penalty for sin and he could raise the third day with power and authority over death, hell, and the grave so that then everything beyond Christ is done in response of Christ's cross. But it was all about seeking and saving that which was lost. And now we're going to look at this. What did Jesus command the church to do? In Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, And Jesus came and spake to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you and lo I am with you always even to the end of the age amen so uh, this uh, uh, this is what the spirit's saying to the church if I could just pause for a second if you take the last month's worth of sermons you'll find that the undercurrent of what the spirit has been saying by what 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 was preached in the last few weeks is that the spirit is saying that the church has got to get in alignment with God's purpose of reaching the world and making disciples and so uh, 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 what what we're talking about tonight uh, is 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 uh, it's just a line upon line it's just it's just hitting the hammer on that head one more time and we're gonna and, and if I can just I, I'm qualifying this because I know my nature and I know that your nature may be the same as you could say yeah I got it let's move on but we've got to get this in our core and have the values and the perspective correctly so that we can flesh that out the other thing is is that uh, I want you to be patient with me but if you can't handle yourself and you just can't be any more patient please come talk to me afterwards and we'll 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 get ahead a little bit because uh, the other part of this series is I want to help us flesh this out because uh, I have heard uh, sermons all my life uh, and teaching on reaching people with the gospel uh, and rightfully so but sometimes uh, we can feel like I want to do that but how do I do that uh, and so I pray that through these series we're going to we're going to get some very practical application of what it means uh, to make disciples but if you are like I've got to do something uh, then uh, then talk to me and we'll we'll start talking about what that looks like in your own life but know that that's kind of where we're going in this series uh, so uh, so uh, just to tie this in a little bit closer uh, with that who I am that we talked about so we talked about or who am I that question uh, that uh, that uh, remember it, we started with the importance of our identity being in Christ Jesus, right? And then we said, what does it look like? What did God make us for? God made us for intimacy with him, first of all, right? He made us for relationship with him. And then we also explored the truth that we were made to worship him, that we were made to bring glory and honor to God, to reflect his image, right? And then we, we had another lesson where we got a little bit more nitty gritty about that, that reflecting his image means that I've got to allow his character to be implanted in me by the fruit of the spirit.
spirit, uh, that as the spirit is in me, uh, it's got to come out in his character being an outflow of my life. Uh, and then we talked about the two attitudes that are very key to really becoming, to, to allowing this growth cycle in our lives of, of coming closer to Jesus and him revealing himself more to us of who he is, his character, his fill in the blank with all of the great characteristics of God. And then me saying, I believe that. Now, God, implant that in my spirit so that I become like that, that, that the love you have, I begin to be filled with that love, that, that the, the peace that you have uh, or the peace that you provide, that I'm allowing that to be implanted in me. And those two attitudes that are so important is brokenness, which in a, in, a, in a simple phrase would be coming to the end of ourselves and being willing to acknowledge that what we are is not enough without God's Spirit stepping in. Yes. And then secondly, is that we've got to have submission. That the authority that God wants us to walk in and the dominion can only come if we're under authority, if we're in submission. So, so, um, so let's now start to flesh that out. The rest of our lesson, I'm going to start tying this together into the mission of Christ Jesus. Um, so, so what did Jesus, uh, I, I love this passage in Matthew 28 that we read because Jesus says, go and make disciples. What's a disciple? I've been saying it, maybe you, some of you have picked up on it because I've been repeating it every so often in my, in my uh, preaching. Uh, but uh, being a disciple is letting Jesus change what you care about to match what he cares about. That's a simple way of looking at it. If I'm discipleable, then I'm willing to let God adjust my perspective to match his perspective. Whether that's in my attitude, whether that's in the way I look at somebody else, it trickles down into every area of my life. And so Jesus said, go and make disciples. If you were to look at what Jesus did, we know the grand scheme, right? That he redeemed the world and he paid the price. But, but, but what, what was left behind as a body of work that Jesus Christ left physically on this earth when he left this earth? He left disciples behind. Everything he did, that was, there, was a, there was an intentional making of disciples, calling people and saying, follow me. And as they followed him, they would make the journey to, to, to saying, I'm going to let the kingdom's values that Jesus is teaching become mine. And some people made the journey and some people didn't make the journey. But Jesus was making disciples. And now he says to his disciples, Disciples. Now I want you to go make disciples. And so uh, uh, really uh, there's so much, as I said, we're going to flesh this out more as we go through it. But, but I, I, it helps me to sometimes uh, uh, the, the, this big picture of reaching the world that, is, that we need that burden and that urgency to come upon us. But sometimes it's so huge and it's so insurmountable that I get overwhelmed and I just, I just clam up because I don't know what to do. What can little old me do to change the whole world? But here is really the key is Jesus saying, make disciples. Is that uh, that that's how that's how the world is redeemed is one person at a time uh, deciding I'm gonna believe what God says uh, and I'm gonna respond to the gospel uh, and let it transform me uh, through the new birth uh, and then I'm gonna walk into maturity the rest of my life uh, and then that individual if they if they will follow the directive of Jesus uh, they'll turn around and and look to make a disciple. They'll look to find one person. And so we're going to talk about what that means more clearly in following lessons. But just think about that. If you could make one disciple a year. Now, that still might seem way out there. But that's a lot more 
uh, uh, attainable than saying, I'm going to save all of Portland. But if you could find one person that you could identify that they are wanting to let God change what they care about. You could find one person that's having a struggle in their life and you could come to them and say, let me tell you what Jesus says about that struggle you're in. And would you be uh, interested in me walking alongside you as you journey to Jesus and what he says about your life? Then we would double in a year. And we know exponential math, right? I, do, I don't know it well, but I know the concept of it, right? So then if you doubled the next year, that would mean that you quadrupled from now to two years. That's the only way, and that's what God designed. That, see, that's what so, I'm so amazed by it, uh, is that how immaculate God's plan is like we got we want to like we we feel like we've got to we got to build a building and we've got to get a sound system and have uh, all these things just like we have here before we can replicate what's here but Jesus is saying no no I'm not calling you to replicate Portland Pentecostals I'm calling you to replicate yourself as I am implanting myself in you as I'm transforming you, I just want you to walk alongside somebody and help them be transformed by me. That's it, it breaks it down and it makes it actually comforting to me. There's still there's still that urgency in me, but it's not something that's just so way out there that I feel like, what can I do really? But it's just making disciples. So discipleship is really the process of establishing the kingdom of God because because you're doing it one person at a time. If the kingdom of God is not flesh and blood, or it's not uh, it's not uh, the the kingdoms of this world, but it's in the hearts of men, then if you and I can uh, get the seed of the word in somebody uh, that sparks to life faith in them, uh, we're establishing the kingdom of God. So let's now start tying this together even more. So. 1 Corinthians chapter number 3, verses 9 through 10. I love this verse, as I do all verses. Um, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building according to the grace of God, which was given me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation and another builds on it, but let each one take heed how he builds on it. This first phrase, for we are God's fellow workers. God is calling us to the great co-mission. What he, that, we, we've probably heard that term, the great commission. What is that? That's, that's me coming alongside Jesus' mission. Jesus is looking to partner with you and I to see transformation in our world, one person at a time. We are invited to partner with him. So participation, uh, so, so, so that is the calling of you and I, is he says, follow me. Uh, and, then, uh, and then as we're following him, then he puts us to work in the labor of his mission, his design. His mission is not, and, and, and I, 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 I Qualify it just enough uh, to help you be clear, but not to, to be obnoxious. Uh, but Jesus' mission is not uh, to have big crowds. Uh, it's not to have the most happening church in town. The mission of God uh, is to see people transformed uh, into his likeness. Uh, and, 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 and some of the rest can become a byproduct of it. Uh, but if my investment uh, gets out of skew and I and it does so easily uh, then I'm concerned about a big church and how big is our church and how how many are we running at our church uh, that's not kingdom values uh, the kingdom values is uh, is who is being transformed and who's still lost 
Uh, because because uh, the, 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 if I'm not careful, if if it's if if it's the uh, if it's the former uh, that I'm measuring by, then at some point in my mind, uh, I don't know where it is for you. It could be different for you. Somewhere there's this this benchmark that if I hit that, uh, then I've accomplished the task and accomplished the mission. And all of a sudden, I fold my arms and say, uh, uh, and I become like uh, like the, the 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 rich farmer or the farmer that Jesus referred to that had a bumper crop and and and, and he said what am I going to do and he says I'm going to build a big barn and I'm going to put all of my uh, my harvest in there and I'm going to take it easy and Jesus said you're a fool this night your soul is required of you if my benchmark I, I don't care if, if, if if my goal is big crowds, even, and I'm just being honest with you about myself, even if I'm telling you this is like a transformative like process that God wants to start refining each of us in, is that, uh, is that I can in good intention... I want people to be saved and I want, I want great harvest, but I can get my eyes out of thick, uh, uh, perspective of what it really is about. And I can say a big crowd of people saved is equaling changing the world. And then, but then once I reach that big crowd, whatever it is to me, whether it's 50, 100, 100,000, whatever it is, how many people are still left unsaved? But if my perspective is, I want to establish the kingdom, then I'll stay in the right, the, the right perspective and I'll always be looking for somebody that's ready for the gospel. And I can then partner with Jesus in his mission. And that is the beautiful honor or privilege that we have. So, so remember how we talked about that the first thing that you and I were made for is relationship with Jesus. Let's tie this together. If you and I co-labor with Christ, then all of a sudden, I am spending more time with Jesus when I am making disciples. Because I realize that I am participating in what God is doing. It requires, it requires me to stay in communion with God. And it becomes this, this is so beautiful. Because all of a sudden it becomes self-perpetuating. Because it's going both ways all of a sudden. Because I, I want to be with Jesus. I want to be with the people that he's caring about. And, and, and then as I'm with the people uh, that he cares about, uh, it feeds my, my, my relationship with him. And, and it also uh, has the byproduct of me realizing where I don't know enough. And so I run to the word of God and I, and I say, God, what are you saying here? What, is, what do you say about this? And all of a sudden, my, as I'm being changed and a disciple of Jesus and closer to him, then I get closer to people that, that I can help. And, and all of a sudden, that helps me. And it becomes, see, God's so perfect. Like, I couldn't plan that. But God's design is that way. Uh, 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 2 Corinthians 5 verses 18 through 21 says it this way. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God were pleading through us we implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. What a beautiful uh, scripture. And, and he's saying here, he's saying, Jesus came for the reason to reconcile the world to himself. God came in Christ Jesus to reconcile the world to him. And now he's given 
that ministry, that same design to you, to us. And now when we're talking to you, it's like we're, we're, we're standing right with Jesus and we're with him saying, come to Jesus. We're saying, come to God. We're, we're echoing what Jesus is saying to them and we become the mouthpiece of God. And, 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 and for sake of a, a time, I won't give it justice, but I'll just say that's a, the powerful uh, um, uh, the design of the Holy Ghost inside of us. Uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory is uh, that, that, that when, when we're being called uh, to be born again of water and spirit and to be born into Christ Jesus, to be baptized into Christ Jesus, all of these terms have us coming into Christ and then the Spirit comes into us. We are in Christ, and Christ is in us. He's inside us and outside of us. But really, I, I, if we could, I don't think we grasp what we're really volunteering for. And I wish we did. And maybe we can say it more clearly, more often. But what is really happening is God is saying, "I need a body." to uh, to speak for me i need a voice to speak into the atmosphere of this city whether it's one by one to an individual but also even in prayer is that the holy ghost is looking for a vessel that would be surrendered and say god your purpose let it be done in me and through me i'm giving room for you to be with me in me and me about your purpose and and so as I'm intimate with Jesus it compels me to become a part of his mission of, of sharing the gospel and and, and 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 not only that but it ties in now beautifully with the second purpose that we have right is to worship him how do we worship him? Well, that's exponential. We talked about it. Uh, you know, if you didn't listen to it, you can find it. I think it's th two months ago, three months ago now. But, uh, but about I am a worshiper. Is that worship? Yes, it means lifting my hands. It means singing and shouting. But it's far deeper than that. It's, it's reflecting his image. It's giving glory and honor to him in word and in deed, in lifestyle, in every aspect of our lives uh, well uh, here's the true reality is that that as as we seek to worship him and we see him for who he is and then then we say god change me into your likeness then his character is birthed in us well you know it's the character of christ that demanded the mission in the first place think about it uh john chapter number three we read this even Sunday, verses 16 through 18. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son of God. The scripture here, the reason I'm reading it tonight is to remind us, it's the love of God that compelled him to come in flesh. It's the love of God that compelled him to the cross. And so as I allow his spirit to be birthed in me, and as I say, God, change me into your likeness, then the love of God has got to compel me uh, to be in, uh, 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 concerned about uh, the condition of people's souls. That 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 uh, I just want to. I'm challenged that uh, that if I am not concerned about people's spiritual condition, uh, that that the love of God has not been perfected inside of me. Uh, because the Scripture it just says that that He that loves. Uh, 
God or says he loves God but hates his brother is a liar because how can you love what you cannot see if you do not love your brother that you can see? That's in, 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 the, in John's epistles. As he was bringing this home is that the truth is, is that if I'm not concerned about people's souls, then the love of God is not being perfected in me. And so something's got to shift to where I love enough to, uh, to, uh, to, to do something about people's salvation. And, and the beautiful uh, relief is, is that I know that I'm not enough, but I also know that when I'm not enough but step out in dependence on him, Jesus' grace always comes and makes up the difference. And so uh, I can be confident that even if I don't have the ability uh, or the or the wherewithal to make the difference in myself, if the love of God is compelling me, uh, then I can step out and just make a move uh, and, and expect that God's going to do the rest. Uh, just think of this. The scripture says that no, no one can come to Jesus except the Father draws him. That's what the scripture says, right? Boy, that's a, that's a relief to me. It takes some pressure off of me. See, I, I, it, I know I'm putting pressure on, but God's taking pressure off if we'll let the perspective get right. There's got to be an urgency in us, but only God can draw them. So, so God didn't tell you and I, go convince people about me. Go convince them that they have to come to me. No, the Spirit has got to draw them. Uh, uh, and, and we're going to talk about this later, uh, that sometimes we just don't realize when God's drawing people. Uh, we don't understand how He's drawing them. But your responsibility, my responsibility is not to draw them. But, but, but the beautiful thing is, is that if the Spirit of God is drawing somebody and I am filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, then I I can just expect that if I'm on mission and I'm intentionally being available for the kingdom's purpose, don't you think that somehow God's spirit drawing them and God's spirit empowering me is going to allow an intersection with somebody that's ready for the gospel? It's going to do that. And so there's, there's a comfort that comes from that, but also just that, that, that realization that I've got to love people. Uh, um, uh, just, uh, I, I'm setting the groundwork, but just another angle of that to help us is, is to understand that the, we got to have the birthing of the, that's why it goes back to who are you, letting the character of Christ be put in you because the truth of the matter is, is we're not going to be able to reach this world if we don't have his love in us. Yeah. You can have ambition for God's kingdom, but you will not be effective in eternal things unless his character's in you. Because I'm telling you, people try you. And Jesus is patient with people. And if I don't let the love of Jesus and patience, long-suffering, the fruit of the Spirit be birthed in me, then I, I will not be able to help somebody make the journey because I won't know how to... I won't be being changed, so I won't know how to help them be changed, for one. And two, when they hit a wall, I'll judge them according to my perspective rather than his perspective. And so... so all of this, 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 this uh, embracing the mission demands me being transformed, but that transformation also will demand me being involved in the mission because I can't love God 
and let his love be uh, filling me up without at some point me getting my eyes up and realizing that there's people out there that need Jesus. And there are people out there that are wanting Jesus. And I've just got to allow God to help me see the right ones that are ready at that time. Also, worship facilitates the mission. 1 Peter 2, 9 through 10 says this, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Uh, what, what, we're chosen for what reason? Uh, to show praises of him that called us out out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Jesus said it another way, let your light so shine before men that they would see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Everything that we do has got to be about Jesus' glory and, and, and it will facilitate the mission because the way that we live ought to give light to people and, and they should see a difference and, 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 and want what we want and, and maybe ask questions uh, or, or at least uh, we'll, we'll be able to show them the fruit of God's ability to transform when we say see how I am I'm not perfect but let me tell you who I was yeah. and it gives opportunity for the gospel to be opened to them so our lifestyle change is intended to be tied to revealing Jesus' greatness so all of this is tied together, and, and, and uh, I just uh, think this is so important as we're getting ready to go into the rest of these lessons in further weeks. Um, let's read now. Um, I would welcome questions at the end if, if you have any. I know this is, this is like another one of those just setting the stage lessons, but... Um, John chapter number 4, verses 31 through 35. Jesus says, in the, in the meantime, his disciples urged him, saying, so, so let me just give you the background. So Jesus, this is when he went to Samaria. And he said, I've got to go through Samaria. And they're coming into Samaria. And he says, I'm going to wait here at this well. And why don't you guys go get food? Because we need to eat. So he sends the disciples with the explicit directions to find food and bring it back to him. But while they're gone, Jesus meets the woman at the well, as we would call her, right? The, the Samaritan woman at the well and, and, uh, and, uh, and asks her for water to drink. And she says, who are you to ask me? Jews don't talk to uh, Samaritans and and." Uh, and he says, well, if you knew who I was, you'd ask me water to drink. Um, and, uh, and, she, she, uh, and you'd never thirst again. And she says, are you greater than Jacob who dug this well? And throughout, then she, he reveals himself as the Messiah. And she says, I'm going to go tell, I got to go tell people. So she's running into the city as the disciples are coming out of the city. He, she's going to share what Jesus has told her. And there's a, there's a revival that happens in Samaria. And so the disciples come back and they say, Rabbi, eat, verse 32. And he said to them, I have food to eat which you do not know. Therefore the disciples said to one another, has anyone brought him anything to eat? Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Do not say there are still four months and then comes harvest. Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields for they are already white for harvest. Jesus turns to his disciples that just did what he asked them to do. Go get him food. And now he's ready to give him food. And now he's like, I'm not hungry. And they're like, what? Did somebody? I thought, I thought he told us to go get him food. What's going on here? And he says, I have meat that you know not of. And it said, do my father's will. What was he telling them there? He was, he was letting them know, listen, what brings strength to me is to do the purpose 
of the kingdom. He was giving them a glimpse into something. And let me just help you, hopefully, to understand this. There is nothing that will strengthen your spirit more than sharing Jesus with somebody else. I, we get weary. We get weary in our hearts. We get weary in our spirits. We have cares. We have struggles. And we can even get discouraged at, at uh, you know, at, when I look at progress, as it were, and, 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 and what I thought would happen. But there's nothing like sharing Jesus with somebody to put it all into perspective. And I feel at rest and have strength in my body. Even if I feel like I've poured out everything I have, there's strength that comes in doing the work of the kingdom of redeeming souls, of reaching to people and making disciples. And I just want to encourage you that, that there's a challenge going out in the spirit to, to be engaged and to embrace the mission. But I'm telling you, that is the, the only thing that sustains a believer from becoming discouraged. The most discouraged, disgruntled people in the church are the people that aren't touching souls. People that just want to find, they come in and say, entertain me, feed me. When they come to church, what can I get? I'm telling you, I, I, I don't think I've ever heard of somebody, and, and, and I'm not saying there's a, a responsibility of the, of the five-fold ministry to, to uh, feed the church, uh, to, to strengthen the church and equip the church. That's absolute responsibility. But I've, I've not heard of, uh, I've heard of people coming and saying, I'm not getting fed at this church, and so I need to go somewhere else. And I know there's exceptions, but I've rarely heard of somebody that's reaching to people that has come and said I'm not being fed because there's something sustaining spiritually about investing in other people and making disciples that it it builds you up it, it strengthens you in your spirit and, and so he says my strength comes from doing my father's will and he says and don't don't think that there's not a harvest and don't think that that the time is later if you just lift your eyes up you'll see that the fields are white and ready for harvest and I I'm sure that you that the fields are white and ready for harvest in Portland and and and, and I do believe that there's there's fields that, that, and, and so we got to be uh, uh, always aware. Uh, and maybe there are people that aren't ready in one area of your life or one sphere of your life. But if we're missional and we become intentionally uh, 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 mobilized into our communities, uh, intentionally touching sinners, uh, there's somebody in that circle that's ready for the gospel. If we would just be able to lift our eyes up and recognize recognize that and we're going to take the time to help uh, uh, how do we recognize when somebody's ready how do we make ourselves available to be that one that speaks for Jesus we're going to get into that in further lessons but like I said if you want to talk about that before then you just give me a phone call or you you talk to me after after our lesson uh, but uh, but I, I'm going to read one more verse as we're coming to a close tonight in first Thessalonians chapter number two verses 17 through 20. But we, brethren, having been taken away from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored more eagerly to see your face with great desire. Therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again, but Satan hindered us. Why? For what is our hope or joy, or crowning, or rejoicing. Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ that is coming? For you are our glory and joy. Paul had the perspective that the, his joy was people that he had touched and was leading to Jesus, that were walking towards Jesus. That was his joy. So when you and I become embracing of his mission and we become a part of the commission and we 
link up with God and partner with Him, it will bring strength and joy into your life. And so there is a burden to reach the loss, but it's Christ's burden. I, I just can't help but think of this, the, the scripture that we've, we've read so often where, where, uh, where Jesus said, uh, you know, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. How does he do it? Take my yoke upon you yeah. and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. Jesus says, you're tired, you're wore out. Come to me and I'll put a burden on you. But my burden will be light. The burden of souls, it becomes light when I allow my life to be available to, to, to actually be a part of making disciples. So I'm going um, to pray. And if somebody has a, a question or a comment, uh, uh, I guess maybe I'll, I'll let you do that now. I, I, I know that we may not have any. I think that the, the next few lessons will be a little bit more to where there might be some questions involved. But I just want to encourage you that, that get, embrace the mission of Christ. And, and, and don't be intimidated by that. And if you are at this moment, I, I just ask you to make it a matter of prayer to say, God, help me to get the perspective right so that I'm not intimidated and I know where to start and you would help me do that. And so tonight's really that first step. You are hitting on what we're going to have a lesson where we get into what that looks like. But that is so important because it is. It's go and make disciples. It's go out there. And, and, and I dare say that, that any of you that, that didn't grow up in the church, so your, your journey to Christ didn't happen by you being on a pew because your parents were already in Christ. How long was God working on you? Uh, okay, let me just do this. Anybody that was not raised in the church that Jesus got a hold of your life, anybody that it took them, um, that they can recognize God was reaching to them a year before they ever came to church, would you raise your hand? Look at that. And so we're going to talk about this in more detail. But Jesus is calling people long before they make it to these doors. And, and, and I, 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 I could just go into our lessons late now, but, but like, and, and we'll, we'll work through this a little bit more, but, but sometimes I think we feel like we're soft-selling Jesus if we don't get to the juggler in one conversation. And like, we got to give them the whole, you know, the whole, like, the whole new birth, in, 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 in that, or, or we failed somehow, but, but I, I don't want to, uh, Jesus help me not to just get too much too soon because we got to, uh, cause, uh, but I'll, I'll get to you a second. Okay. Uh, um, but the truth of the matter is, is that, um, I found that the, there's a problem with that in my perception it's because I have thought of relationship with God as transactional. And so much of our church, of, our, of the church world does. If I do this, this, and this, then I've made it and I'm saved. That's not God's way. God is about covenant relationship. A covenant is us 
It's him being about us and us being about him. And all of a sudden, we're on a journey the rest of our life. Well, when it's transactional, then, then I say, then I just got to give them this is the what for and check the box. But then it, 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 even if they do respond to that, it, they're not made a disciple unless they make the journey to realize I, I don't arrive someday and say, I've done enough for you, God, and now I have my salvation. Or, or however you think of it, even if you say, there's no part that I play, but, but yet those people that say that will still say, you got to say a prayer or whatever it is. And they say, now, now you're good. But so, so if it's a process and relationship, then, then if I can give them a little bite, and them be willing to make that change in their life, or that say, Jesus, I'm going to let you change what I care about. You know, I used to think that um, that I was good enough, and if I just did enough good things, I could be saved. And and I had this conversation with them, and they're saying, Well, you know, I used to think that too until I started uh, realizing that um, nothing I did was going to be good enough. And I realized that the only way this was going to work is if I let God change me. Well, if they buy into that, well, then they're on the journey. So, Sister Di. Yeah. But that's all about God. Yeah, he does. And we're going to go into, like, this is like, man, this is basically, we're all up in the lesson that we got coming, but, and I'm okay with that. We can, you know, so these are seeds for us to just marinate on that. Brother Craig. Well, uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess I'd have to think about that. But, you know, they were definitely early in their discipleship process. So they were totally thinking everything on the because he did tell them, go get food, you know. So that, that's all they did is they just said, okay, we're going to go get food. And so I think that um, really, this is my opinion, but I think that, that he really did want them to get food. And two, that may, gave him time for somebody to be vulnerable. That wouldn't have been vulnerable otherwise. And teach them the spiritual truth. Yeah. And then that too, yeah. We got to find them and be recognizing that. And we're, we'll talk about that even more as far as like to kind of like, what does that look like? And you and 
and I'll just be honest with you, I don't have all the answers. But if we can get the principles down, then the Holy Ghost will lead you and I to make up the rest of the difference. So our next lesson is actually going to be on inter- is going to be on um, it's going to be on being an intercessor. So we are going to link prayer into this, and then the last two lessons will be a lot more of how to talk to people and things like that. But um, but uh, that's where we're going. So thank you. Let's just pray as we're closing. Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Jesus, that your love compelled you to come to us, Lord. And I'm just asking that you would link us to your purpose, Jesus. Link us to making disciples, God, that you would help us, Lord, to make disciples and to be in love with you in a way that we love others and we're transformed and we help others be transformed, Jesus. We want to.